651 News at 10 starts now. We are counting down to liftoff. The Crew 8 mission is still on track for tonight. Four astronauts are getting ready to blast off into space. Thanks for joining us here at 10. I'm Hannah McKenzie. We've got a live look at the Falcon 9 rocket from the Launch Credit Union camera over at Port Canaveral. And we are now under 60 minutes from that scheduled launch. Fox 35's Esther Bauer is live at the Kennedy Space Center now with a preview. Esther, how are things looking out there? Well, Hannah, I will tell you, we are still holding out hope that Crew 8 is going to safely and successfully lift off here in just under, like you said, 60 minutes. I will also tell you, things have progressively improved here at the Kennedy Space Center. So we started out about 75% go for launch. Since then, weather officials have moved that up to an 85% go for launch. And we were out here last night and yesterday. They actually scrubbed this mission hours before the astronauts ever made it to the rocket. I will We'll step out of frame and we're going to zoom in on this beautiful shot. The astronauts are on board. Crew 8 is strapped in and we are inching closer to that 1053 liftoff here at launch pad 39A. Now NASA and SpaceX are still monitoring weather in the ascent corridor. The astronauts need to have a safe flight path as they clear the entire East Coast on their way to the International Space Station. Crew 8 has three first time flyers on board and one veteran who's already been to space two other times. The mission is made up of three NASA astronauts representing the United States. We have Matthew Dominic, Michael Barrett, and Jeanette Epps. One cosmonaut is also on board. Alexander Grabenkin is representing Russia. Now, some of the science will research cures for cancer and how microgravity affects astronauts' health for longer missions. And so all of the type of science that we have set on these types of crew studies and ISS are going to be very impactful for us to understanding how we're going to get ourselves to Mars. And these astronauts are quite a diverse group. They are not just engineers and scientists. One of them worked at the CIA and at the Ford Motor Company. Another one actually has a degree in TV and radio broadcasting. So Hannah, maybe in another life we could look into having careers with NASA. I just think that that is so cool. But we do have an instantaneous launch window tonight. So we cover several launches here on Fox 35. And sometimes we have two to three hours, right, when we can see a rocket rocket lift off. That is not the case tonight, and that's because these astronauts are linking up with the moving space station. So they have that one shot to really get things right. And the time we are counting down to a look over at the countdown clock, 49 minutes and 54 seconds. 10.53 is the time we all need to keep in mind. I'm going to be out here live. I'll see you a little bit later at 10.30, and we will see if Crew 8 does lift off this evening. Reporting live in Brevard County, Esther Bauer, Fox 35 News. Thanks so much, Esther. We will check in with you a little bit later. That's what everybody wanted to be when they grew up, right? Yep. When they were little, you always want to be an astronaut. But this launch, though, has been delayed twice mm -hmm. over the last few days, all due to weather. So Fox 35 steam, uh, Storm Team meteorologist Ian Cassette is here now. Ian, everyone's looking at you now. The pressure is mm -hmm. on. Esther said it's looking good out there, but yeah. will it remain that way? Well, we've seen that improvement in the forecast. That is be with the weather improving. I was mm -hmm. it's, uh, described as dodgy this weekend, that we'd be ba da battling those rain chances and the clouds, all of that. But look at the radar right now. Fox 35 Storm Tracker Radar. It is quiet now. We had earlier plenty of showers and storms, but when that sun set, so did the clouds and the rain. And now we are th seeing things much more settled. So an improved forecast, currently even mostly clear skies across much of our area, including over the Kennedy Space Center and over 39A, the launch pad uh, that it will going, be going up from. So I'm feeling optimistic by the weather. Now, of course, this could still get scrubbed for other reasons. There's a lot more they need to go with the crude launch, but with an 85% chance to go for weather, definitely looking optimistic here at this point, and I don't forecast any rain here for the rest of this evening, so I'm not expecting any rogue little shower to ruin things. Looking at downtown Orlando right now, it is a quiet night. We did pick up some decent rain today. I'll show you the rain totals from today after some scattered afternoon storms. We move ahead to the work week where starting things out tomorrow, we're going to have some fog. Could be dense in the morning, so give yourself a little extra time in the morning for your commute. We will have another chance of afternoon showers and storms tomorrow, but not to the level that we saw today. And as we look ahead to the week, Wednesday that's right, 70% chance of rain. We have our next best chance of rain on the way this week. I'll talk about more about this very active weather pattern and what we can expect in the coming week. Hannah? 
All right, thanks, Ian. Developing tonight, Orlando police are searching for the person who shot and killed this woman. Officers say Veronica Ramirez was shot in the parking lot outside the Central Florida Fairgrounds last night. Fox 35 Stephanie Buffamonte is there live now. Stephanie, you spoke with a witness who saw all of this play out. Yeah, I spoke with a family who were just feet away from the woman who was shot and killed. They were just at the fair, enjoyed the day there when they were walking to their car and bullets rang out. Get in the car! Chaos at the Central Florida Fairgrounds. Oh my God, somebody got shot for real. We heard boom, 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 boom. And the, everybody started running. Orlando police say 35 year old Veronica Ramirez was killed after bullets went flying in the parking lot outside of the Central Florida Fair Saturday night. To have my whole family together laughing, we enjoying ourselves, and then to end the night with that, oh, our hearts was broken. That's what it was. We was our hearts was broken. The Gaines family had parked in front of the woman who was shot and killed. They were walking out behind her, but stopped to talk with someone. They already had made it to that car. And when I tell you, I just thank God. I'm just so grateful. But at the same time, I was so hurt to hear that screaming. to hear the mother screaming like she was literally screaming for help, help, help. Young Alina grabbed her cousin and took cover. I just thought about grabbing my cousin because I didn't want her to get hurt or nothing. But we hid behind a car and all I could see is the lady just drop and she was slumped over from the gunshots. The president with the Central Florida Fair says his heart goes out to the victim's family. He says it happened around 1030 after the fair closed for the night and in the parking lot next to Colonial. They've increased security. We have uh a hefty security presence between Orlando PD, um, other agencies, our internal security, two internal security companies. We hope to see people out and enjoying the fair. And um, this, this is an isolated incident that seems to have been a tr tragic, certainly, but um, we don't anticipate anything like that to recur. Orlando police released this crime bulletin looking for information that will help them find the person who killed Ramirez. The Gaines family still shaken, hoping the shooter is caught. Somebody has to come forward. I'm sure somebody's seen like the guilt of that to just randomly shoot in a parking lot. If you know anything, give that family peace. Give them a peace of mind because they lost someone tremendously dear to them. Now, if you do have information, you can call Crime Line and remain anonymous. There is a $5,000 reward. Now, I do want to say the witnesses that I spoke with and a security guard that I talked to here thinks that the gunshot came from Colonial here. I reached out to Orlando police to see if we can confirm that, but haven't heard back yet. Reporting live in Orlando, Stephanie Buffmonte, Fox 35 News. Thanks, Stephanie. And just hours before that incident, another deadly shooting in Orlando. Officers say one person was killed near the chill game room on Columbia Street last night. This is a live look from that scene when police first arrived. That was around 8 p.m. No word yet on any suspects involved. Support continues to pour in for Maddie Soto. The 13-year-old's body was recovered from a wooded area in St. Cloud on Friday. Soto was reported missing on Monday after her mother's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, said he took her to school, but she never made it inside Hunter's Creek Middle School. Investigators say they now believe she was killed in an apartment in Kissimmee. Stearns is the prime suspect in Maddie's disappearance, but isn't charged with her death, at least for now. He's behind bars in Osceola County on sexual battery and child porn charges. According to law enforcement, Stearns wasn't cooperating with the search for Maddie's body. Recovery teams found her after an exhaustive search in a densely wooded area in Osceola County. We spoke with neighbors nearby. It was definitely heartbreaking because it's like, you know, it's close by home. And when I actually like saw where she was basically found, I was like, wow. Like I used to take the bus like every single morning and throughout this area. So it was something that, you know, just broke my heart. Stearns was supposed to appear in court yesterday, but refused to stand before the judge. Tonight, he remains behind bars on no bond. Kissimmee police say they aren't releasing any further updates on the case for now. 
In Marion County, a woman has been arrested after a deadly hit and run crash in Ocala. Troopers say Mary Wise slammed into two pedestrians on Spring Road late last night. An 84 year old man was killed and a 49 year old riding his bike was seriously injured. Wise was tracked down after leaving the scene. She's being held on no bond. Also in Marion County tomorrow, K-9 Leo will be laid to rest and honored for his service. The K-9 deputy was shot and killed by a suspect in the line of duty while protecting his handler and other deputies. The service starts at 10 a.m. It's in front of the Marion County Sheriff's Office Main Operations Building in Ocala. Everyone is welcome to attend. Fox 35 News at 10 is just getting started. Still ahead, magic is getting more expensive. When Disney World is expected to raise ticket prices and by how much. Plus, Bike Week is in full swing over in Daytona Beach. We're talking more than half a million people coming into town just for this. A look at all of the events going on. Plus, the Orlando Magic were in action at home tonight trying to continue their winning streak. Fox 35 sports reporter Jessica Ely is here with more, Jess. Well, I'll tell you, it's a good time to be a Magic fan right now. They won, so they've already surpassed last year's win total. The Magic are now six in the Eastern Conference standings. Jamal Mosley explains how the Magic were able to earn the season sweep against the Pistons. Plus, two former UCF players shine at the NFL Combine. Find out how they stacked up against others in the field later in the Fox 35 Sports Zone. When should we head out to the parks this weekend? Today's a beautiful day to go to the parks. Temperatures warming up nice into the 80s with lots of sunshine through the day. When can I mow my lawn? Good news is you can mow the lawn today. Rain's going to hold off. Should I wash the car or wait? A great day to wash your car. Noah knows. Watch Noah Bergeron weeknights on Fox 35. Bike Week is back in Daytona Beach. The annual festival brings in around 550,000 bikers from around the world, which means the streets of Daytona are loud and at times rowdy. Fox 35's Matt Treza takes a look at the festivities. The roar of engines on Main Street means Bike Week has returned to Daytona Beach. Visitors from far and near showing up for the fun, like John Borner. Because I've been riding for 65 years, and I'm 79 years old, and I bought myself a new Harley for my birthday in November. He says he can't imagine a year without a bike week. It's just enjoyable to walk around, see the people, look at the motorcycles, you know, and uh, like I said, I'll never give up riding. Every bike week, about half a million people show up in Daytona Beach for motorcycle races, concerts, bike shows, and more. Along with the excitement that the bikers say they come here for, Bike Week also brings big business to Daytona Beach. Yeah, sometimes I spend a couple of hundred dollars, three, four hundred bucks. This trip, I'll probably be looking at about twenty-five hundred. Probably five, six thousand dollars. Bobby Honeycutt owns Froggy's Saloon on Main Street. He says Bike Week brings a big boost to his business. It's our shot in the arm, you know, we, we kind of make, take this money and we reinvest it back into business. Helps carry us throughout the slow months. He brings on nearly a hundred extra workers to handle the Bike Week crowds. Without that, this Daytona couldn't grow the way it's growing. This extra money that's fed into the hotels and so forth feeds our economy. So if you, if you don't allow that to happen, you're going to just make, we're, we're going to filter and, and fade away. Workers say they appreciate the crowds that turn out for the event. We love them, man. We need them. You know, that's the, we thrive on those kind of people. Bike Week runs through March 10th. In Daytona Beach, Matt Treza, Fox 35 News. Well, not the best weather this evening for those Bike Week festivities. Fox 35 Storm Team Meteorologist Ian Cassette joins me now. Ian, we saw some rain. It has since cleared up, and we're all kind of holding our breath and making sure it's not going to come back because we want to see this launch go off. Yeah, confident that our rain's going to hold off here. It was a busy day today. We started out with rain in the morning. In fact, most of the rain in Daytona today fell in the morning where it looked a little bit better into the afternoon, but scattered storms did bring about some lightning and even some hail out there here today. Now, Looking outside downtown Orlando, very quiet weather. This is what we like to see a quiet night, and we're probably going to stay calm here through the night and into tomorrow morning. Our radar shows that there's no rain right now, and it looks clear all across from both coasts, including the Cape. So a plus there. Hopefully it stays that way, and it probably will stay that way. As for how much rain we picked up, most areas did see some rain today. Some pockets, especially in Seminole County, picked up over two inches of rain. Two to three inches of rain came down 
down uh, just north of our station, in fact, uh, near north of Heathrow, and they got some good rain there from a very slow moving storm. So it was very summer like day where we had the humidity and then we had those storms that didn't really move much, but actually developed along the sea breeze. What we can expect here going forward is tonight it will be quiet and dry patchy, dense fog possible. It could bring impacts to your morning commute tomorrow and then to tomorrow afternoon. Not going to be like today. Could see some showers, maybe an isolated thunderstorm, but definitely not as stormy as the weather we saw here on this Sunday. Waking up to temperatures in the lower 60s, 63 degrees in Orlando to 61 degrees in Ticeville and 61 degrees in Gainesville. We're probably going to have the clouds here again. Clouds will be in the form of fog in the morning with that northeast wind, so expect overcast conditions early on in the day. As we get into the afternoon, 12 o'clock, still looking mostly dry. Can't roll out an isolated shower popping up here in the greater Orlando area, up near Zellwood and Apopka as well. St. Cloud potentially there, 3 to 4 in the afternoon. So that's probably going to be our limited rain chance for the day, and it's going to be mostly kept to the southwest towards Claremont and towards the Tampa Bay area and quiet by the evening as well. So if the launch gets scrubbed tonight, tomorrow evening also looks pretty good. But with the fog, expecting some fog to develop along the Volusia County coastline up into Flagler County as well. Palm Coast to Deland into Northern Lake County watching for some patchy dense fog. That's the area that you see in the red. It will be patchy, so not everyone is going to see that dense fog, but where it does develop certainly could bring those impacts through the morning. As for bikers, promising forecast for tomorrow looks good. Temperatures are going to be comfortable in the mid 70s under mostly cloudy skies, maybe even a little bit more sunshine breaking in later into the afternoon. Closer inland in Orlando, isolated chance of a shower thunderstorm by mid afternoon with mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures topping out near 80 degrees. Orlando, Ocala cooler with that onshore breeze 76 degrees in New Smyrna for tomorrow. As we go forward with this week, Monday again, not expecting great rain chances, but Tuesday into Wednesday we're going to see a system approaching from the south. These bringing afternoon storms Tuesday and then into Wednesday looking likely to see showers and maybe a few storms, but currently not thinking the severe chances are going to be that high with this system, but it will likely be a wet day on Wednesday. If you've got plans, then definitely keep weather aware as we go after Wednesday, drier weather Thursday and Friday and into next weekend. Look at those temperatures mid 80s on Saturday. Have a cold front that bring rain by Sunday and then we spring forward Saturday night into Sunday. Hannah. All right. Thanks so much, Ian. Still ahead on Fox 35 News at 10. Spring break is creeping in and it's not too late to plan a getaway and snag some good deals. Some tips from the experts on how to stretch your travel budget when we come back. Spring break season is here, and while those trips are fun to plan, the cost can add up quickly. Fox 35's Don Hasbrouck shares a few tips on how to score some travel deals. When it comes to planning a spring break getaway, flexibility is the name of the game if you're looking to save on your spending. If you're trying to depart on the same day that everybody's trying to leave for spring break, prices are going to be higher, crowds are going to be crazier. Consumer finance expert Andrea Warrock recommends comparing prices for hotels and flights on different days of the week and consider keeping an open mind about your destination. A lot of people head to the beach to get away from the cold weather, but prices are going to be higher there. So maybe there's an off beaten path that you can go. You can actually set price tracking alerts for different destinations from your home airport and just see what comes up. To save on the cost of your flight, consider getting a credit card that gives you airline miles for your purchases. When you first sign up, a lot of these airline credit cards offer you free bonus miles when you spend a certain amount. Booking in advance can also help you find a better price. Once that fourth week before your departure date arrives, prices are going to keep ticking up, especially for popular times of the year like spring break. So you really don't want to wait. When it comes to getting a deal on a hotel, that can be a bit tougher. Consumer Checkbook's Kevin Brassler recommends checking out loyalty programs among hotel chains. Uh, once you do that, they'll offer you lower rates than what they're offering to the general public, but it's not that big of a discount. It's like 8 to 12 percent. Brassler says that so-called mystery deals can also help to cut costs. Where you book in an area without knowing the specific property until you pay. If you know you want to go to a specific area of a major city, you can be guaranteed that you'll be in that neighborhood. It's really the only way to save significantly on hotel. On average, we'd say between 20 and 35 percent uh, consistently. Uh, and we also find that by booking directly with the hotel, you often get a better.
better room when you check in. Another way to keep a closer eye on your travel costs is to be mindful of your smaller expenses while on vacation. Oh, a small meal, a Starbucks coffee on the go, a souvenir here, and while you're maybe only spending five, 10, $20, it can all add up and bust your budget. Warrock says things like taking public transportation, making meals in a hotel kitchenette, and visiting attractions with a deal can all make a difference. Find out if there are certain museums or cultural centers that are offering uh, discount or free admission times or days of the week. This could be a good way to see some popular sites while saving money. And making your vacation a group one can also help with expenses. Yeah, so traveling as a group is a great way to save money because you can split the cost of accommodation, of large meals, groceries, and this could really make it a little cheaper for yourself. All righty, still ahead on Fox 35 News at 10, we are officially go for launch with less than 30 minutes away from liftoff for NASA's SpaceX Crew 8 mission. We'll have another live report from the Cape where final preparations are now underway. But before we head to break, we are saving you some cash with the Fox 35 Pump Patrol. Gas is $3.12 a gallon at the racetrack on Slavia Road in Oviedo. We'll be right back. Getting a new phone? Download the Fox 35 News app. Free to download, free to use.